Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. In today's equipment autopsy, I have a television. Little tiny, ooh, there's your problem. Well, look at that. A power plug, yeah. It's not supposed to look like that. But we're not gonna let that stop us. This puts out 5.5 VA at 50 hertz, 5.0 VA at 60 hertz, DC 6 volts, 300 milliamps. Okay, I can fake that if I have to. So we've got a Sanyo AM FM quartz clock radio and TV. They're proud that it's a quartz clock. That tells you how old this is. And on the front, there's a little TV. It's always good when there's a piece of scotch tape on it. You know that that's good. It's got, this is the kind of little thing you'd take around to like a hotel room or something because those have never had televisions in them. But it's got a little timer on there. It's got a glorious two inch screen. Tuning is done manually, so there'll be some variable capacitors in here. And it's got a charge setting, timer on, off, and off is charge. So, Batteries? Batteries. And they're labeled, this is great, that you can see how old this is. They're labeled dry cells, of which it wants double A's and it wants five of them. And there's also a silver oxide cell down in here. You wanna see how bad that looks? Let's open it up, take a look and see how bad the silver oxide cell is. Silver oxide cells probably for the clock. There's, there's our silver oxide cell. A little coin cell. That may actually be a silver oxide cell. I don't see anything out that says lithium, which is what you'd expect today. I wonder how old this is. I'm gonna guess 80s. Just by the look and feel and general vibe of the thing. So we gotta plug up here for something. Power. Well, if I got a power plug up here, maybe. Yeah, it says a rechargeable battery connects up there, an NTP550B. Yeah, I'm gonna see if we can power this up. We'll try it's wall work. Maybe it'll just work. It could happen, we could get lucky. All right, on. It powers up. We want TV. And there's nothing out there anymore. This is a television for Stations that don't exist anymore. But, radio's still out there. I'm gonna say this is probably defective because I wasn't really expecting to get TV because I think those are all moved now, but I, I should get radio. I'm on the radio setting. Hmm. Well, she's dead. 
And that's not the bad side, really. The bad side is I just applied power to a television. It's a tiny television, but it's still a CRT. CRTs have a uh, electron gun, and they operate at very high voltages. And even this little TV operates at very high voltages. So you can bet there's a capacitor inside here right now waiting for me to go gefinger poking so that it can blast me. And I've experienced that. I know what it feels like to get blasted with 50 kilovolts of DC. And I am in no hurry to ever do that again. Now a smart man, a reasonable man, would just leave this off for a week to let the capacitors drain down and let all the electrostatic energy bleed off so as not to get bit by this device. But as anybody who has ever followed the comments of these videos knows, I am not accused of being a smart man. So, let's cry Phillips and let loose the screwdrivers of war. Right now, half the people watching this are just watching to see me get bit with 50 kilovolts. We're kind of early in the process to have to resort to prying on things, but I very quickly ran out of screws. There's only three of them. Hmm. Let's cut our way through that tape. Make sure we get a good. Yeah, so that's cool. And grab my little widgie bar. So there's some snaps up front. Get those off. And some wires hard soldered in place. It looks like everything stuffs in the end for the most part, but I gotta think this bottom comes off. I'm your finger poking around the thing's gonna get it's gonna hurt every time. I know how this ends. Ah, take the knobs off. Always take the knobs off. See, those. Take the knobs off. Because the knobs will hold things together that you're not expecting to be held together. I put that screw back in. I didn't put the battery back in. Let's 
No hidden screws under stickers. Oh, maybe you? Look at this. Here's a clue. See the clue? Arrow and a little tab that says push me. It says lean on me right here. I will tell you secrets. Ha, ah, okay. Okay, so the top's coming off, and we're in. All right. Oh, God, this is ugly. Okay. So now we're into it. That took doing. It's rather sturdily built. So in here will be a receiver, power supply, audio amplifier, and a CRT power supply. We can see right here, yeah, point at it with the metal probe. We can see right here that cup. See that cup? That tells you that's a real cathode ray tube. Everything connected to this wire is angry and wants to hurt you. And a lot of things connected to the back are angry and want to hurt you. You should not touch them. You should not mess with them. You should not be screwing around inside here. This is stupid. It's all ends in tears. Okay. RF modules. That's the flyback right there. Let's cut some wires. It's like diffusing a bomb. Stay away from that. You quit going over there. I warned you twice. Okay, give you a moment to just chill. So here, we have a lot of analog. Look at all the analog. Look at all the analog RF stuff. We've got a ferrite antenna right here. This is classic of little AM FM radios. We've got a lot of goop, all kinds of goop. And all this goop is here to hold those coils in place because these coils it's kind of cool how they make these. They put the coil in there, and it's an inductor. But you see how they're kind of weird shaped? They put the inductor in, and it's soldered right to the board. And it gets you pretty close, but you got to be dead on. So what you do is you stick a plastic tool, like a plastic screwdriver, in there, and they're watching a the screen, or they're watching a the scope, or something like that, and they just bend it a little bit. That changes the inductance just a little bit. You just put a tool in there, you just Tweak it out, and you're like, ah, no, you push it back to your elbow. Okay, that's better, good. And you get just right, and then you put all the goop in there, and that just holds everything where it's supposed to be. We've come a long way since then. Well, at least we like to think so. And then we've got a bunch of passives. We got a pile of electrolytics all over the place. These are variable inductors, some more inductors, a lot of inductors, a lot of tuned circuits. There's, there's a lot of RLC circuitry happening here. And we got a speaker, which is a massive, super powerful 
16 ohm 0 0.2 watt speaker with a good layer of cruft. And then just our basic really simple little control panel on the front. So that's pretty boring. Now, this is the part where I should stop right now. I just want you to know, this is, this is the moment where I was like, that's when I should have stopped. Okay, let's get into it. I don't see any big, angry Lydic staring at me, so I've got that going for me. But just because I don't see it, don't mean it ain't there. And CRTs can hold a substantial kick in them. But I've identified the super dangerous spot. That doesn't mean there isn't a dangerous spot that I'm not seeing. I don't like anything that goes to the back end of that. There are those of you who are going to comment and say, Ah, oh, you're a wuss, man. You're afraid of a little CRT. Yeah. You know what the difference is between me and all the people who are commenting saying that I'm a big wuss for being afraid of a little CRT? Those are the guys that have never been bit by one. I'm the kid that was smart enough that I only peed on the electric fence once. Let's see. I should be able to really just unplug that. Okay. Doing this on a big stainless steel table. Can you come out? No. Okay, I gotta get gotta get in there. Cut those, cut those, cut that, that. That just leaves you. So, here's our CRT that is now much safer. But it'd be able, it'd be, if I get that off, and I know that just pops in there, you just pop it off, but I don't want to grab a handful of that and yank on it. <laughs> I really don't. I am not comfortable working on CRTs because I've had just enough of that technology in my lifetime. Like I, I have lived through the end of the CRT. I have just enough of that technology to have messed with it, just enough to really not like messing with it. But this is our CRT. And you can see down in the bottom, We've got, it's, it's a vacuum tube. So everything that you're used to in a vacuum tube applies. So you've got CRT, cathode ray tube. You've got a cathode, an emitter. There's a, a filament in there, a heater, all that jazz. You've got steering coils here. And then the electron beam slams into this surface, the front of the tube, and it draws a picture. And there's lots and lots and lots of videos on YouTube on how CRTs work, and you totally should watch a couple because it's really neat. It's vacuum tubes on their own are just magical, but CRTs are really neat stuff. That's cool. There's really nothing down in here to dig into. I mean, I've got the big wire here. That's going to go to the flyback. So that's our high voltage power supply there. I've got some RF stuff here all covered in tape. So some little sealed boxes. There's a cool component here. 12423-38.9MK1. I'll bet that's a 38.9 megahertz crystal right there. And we've got, here's our tuning set up over here, which is going to go to a variable capacitor, which is soldered inside this box. I don't think I can get it out. That's pretty well sealed up. There's some ugly solder. Look at that. Look at the, the flux on it. That's pretty gross. Really simple board. There's a lot of stuff on it, but the traces are huge. It's really, like, this is old school. 
And I see a fair bit of oxidation over here around this. And when we plugged it in, it worked. So I think this was a perfectly working device that's, no, because it didn't get radio signals. It didn't get FM. I should have got a radio signal somewhere. So maybe it was broke, but I think the real thing that killed this was obsolescence. So that's that one, the quickie. You guys have fun, and as always, we'll see you next time.